Hi, my name is Amelia Clark, and I'm here with Harper's Bazaar UK to share some of my life lessons. I think what I've learned about style over the years is the difference between what I appreciate and what suits me, <laughs> which are sometimes two different things, which is why I love a photo shoot, because then I get to wear all these amazing things and the photographer's incredible and, the, and they make it work. My personal style has evolved. It has evolved. I feel like it's evolved with time. I feel like it's evolved with my obsession with fashion. I feel like it's evolved with what designers are doing that kind of is more applicable to day-to-day -day wearing because again I dress up for a living so like I'm always in a costume so when I wear my own clothes it's kind of changed and I think when I was younger I just sort of tried everything and anything and then as I've gotten older it's just you kind of return to the classics but then I get to have fun with like bags or shoes or jewelry or my hair or my makeup or something like that. But what I wear tends to be pretty, I don't want to say safe, but probably quite safe. The best piece of fashion advice I've ever been given. Getting stuff tailored. So I'm five foot two. It's a problem because like if you buy nice clothes, they're designed for tall people. <laughs> and so when I wear them, it doesn't look good. And so when I realized that you could tailor clothes, then it was like a game changer. Oh, what we wear matters so much. It can transform your mood. It can make you feel different. And I don't like to think that what you wear is the definition of your confidence because you should be able to wear anything, anything at all. If you wake up in the morning and the thing that's gonna make you feel good is wearing your pajamas. That's cool, your pajamas with a heel, come on, I'm feeling you. The first thing people see when they see you is your choice of outfit, is, your, is what clothes you're wearing. And I think it took me a long time to realize that, that that was important to me and that I could express who I was as myself outside of the world of the industry and outside of the world of the characters that I play and I get to be me. I've learned a lot about beauty, but I've learned most about beauty from my mum. She used to work in, in makeup, so when I was a kid, she gave me quite a lot of life lessons that maybe I wasn't ready for. <laughs> so she'd be telling me about like, how to make like, makeup look like you weren't wearing any, and I was like, I'm 13, I want it to look exactly like I'm wearing loads. I want to wear blue mascara. And so as, again, as I've evolved, it's just, it's just been a stage with fashion and with makeup. It's just been an evolution of like, you, you find the thing and you go mad for it and you put too much on or do too much. And then as you get older, it's just a progression of taking it off. And I think that's a sign of confidence as well. Allowing yourself to look like yourself. Best piece of beauty advice I've been given, if anyone's heard me do any interview ever about makeup, you've heard me say this 9,000 times, but my mum told me not to pluck my eyebrows. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen. They're here. They're strong. They're here to stay. They've never been changed. Don't pluck them. Even if like we see you people start to say like, oh, we're gonna go back to the thin eyebrow. No, we won't. It will come full circle. <laughs> Believe in your eyebrows. My go-to beauty product would be Clinique Moisture Surge. I've spoken about this the whole day long. You've got glowy, dewy skin. It's kind of amazing. That and then just mascara. Just loads of mascara. Sometimes I feel most beautiful when I get to do like a beautiful photo shoot and there are professionals who are making me look beautiful. That's fun. But I either feel most beautiful the first day I wash my hair, because <laughs> if you're like me and you only wash your hair twice a week, they're special days because they're the days when you're looking your best because you've got fresh, freshly washed hair. Largely, I feel my most beautiful when I'm having a good time. I was with my friends at dinner last night surrounded by people that I really, really, really loved. And I felt so confident and beautiful in myself, way more than like any fancy event. Self-care means to me complicated. It feels like it's a complicated, loaded word because 
In the beginning, self-care was like a revolutionary thought. And then as time has gone on, it's become this kind of loaded hashtag self-care sort of energy, which is confusing because I think self-care can mean a million different things. If you're a social person, self-care can mean going out and having fun. And if you're not a social person, it can mean staying in with your tiny furry loved pet like me. I think it just means quietening the world around you so that you can listen to yourself, whatever it is that you need. Success to me in my career is waking up every day and wanting to go to work. If the movie's no good, that's fine. If the play gets several reviews, that's fine because you've already won. You've already been successful because you've already got what you wanted and what you need as a human being out of the work that you've been doing. Getting to work with creative people, that's what success means to me. And it, that's definitely evolved a huge amount and it's been, I suppose, like a painful experience getting to that moment because it means the loss of like what you thought the big dreams were. But I don't see that as a failure. I see that as, again, success. I always knew I wanted to be an actor. Yes, always. I was like two, precocious, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Can you imagine having a two year old me like, I wanna be an actress. Yeah, I know, I've never wanted to do anything else to the point where like, I feel like my life would have been a bit easier if I had gone, maybe I'll try university or like, maybe I wanna be an astronaut. No, that would have been more complicated, but you see what I'm saying. I've, I've thought many times, maybe I'll just give up acting and I can't, I just can't do it. The best piece of advice I would give to someone starting out in the industry is, are you sure? <laughs> if there is anything else, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if there is anything else, if you are a young actor who's like coming up to, am I gonna go to drama school? I think I wanna be an actor. Is there anything else in the world that you could do that would bring you joy. Not that like I could be an accountant, I'm really clever, but like that you would want to do. Do that because there's so much joy and there's so much love and there's so much amazing things to be found in this career. And I've had some of the best moments of my life doing it, but I've had some of the worst. And you've got to be there for the worst and you've got to like ride through the worst to get to the best. And so if you don't love it with your heart, mind, body, soul, there is nothing else on earth that I could possibly do, then that would be my biggest piece of advice because most of acting is being unemployed and that ain't glamorous. So if there's anything else that you can do, do that. But if there isn't, and this is what you wanna do, then always follow the creativity, never follow the money. What draws me to a project is always the people involved. So director basically I'm just completely director led like if it's a director I want to work with you sort of don't need to read the script I just want to learn as much as I can and I want to learn from as many different people as I can and good different directors everyone has their own individual style their own individual like creativity so that's what I am looking for in a in my next job my friendships are the loves of my life it's the most underrated yet impactful relationship you can have in your entire life. Like the, the fact that I've known my friends for minimum 14 years. Yeah, I value friendship above everything in this entire world apart from my dog. But again, he's a friendship. It's a friendship, it's a furry friendship. How would my friends describe me? I don't wanna know. <laughs> Completely bonkers, overly generous. And like that sounds like that's also like a humble brag. It's not a humble brag. I think it can make people feel uncomfortable. I just like to give stuff to people. I just really like it. And sometimes people find it a bit much. Oh my goodness, what have I learned about love? Love is a kind of testimony to the power of being a human. I think that when you truly love someone, it's sort of being able to truly understand forgiveness and compassion and openness. And the fact that love can encompass all of those things is kind of miraculous. And then you just get like the hot, sexy love, which is like immediate and pheromones and amazing. That's nothing about any of those things. That's just about like the moment that you're in and you're never more present than when you're falling in love with someone for the first time. And it's kind of incredible. 
But I think compassion, forgiveness, and love are all sort of rolled up into the same thing. And that's when you get to see how beautiful it is to be a human. I, this is really funny. I don't, I don't know if you do like the love languages thing, but according to the love languages, mine would be acts of service. So if someone were to buy me a diamond ring, I'd be like, thanks babe, appreciate it. If someone were to come round because there was a cockroach, my biggest phobia, disgusting things. But if I were to call someone and be like, listen, there's a cockroach in my house and I'm paralyzed and I can't move, and they were to come around and get rid of it for me, that would blow my mind. I'd be like on the floor. What have I learned about confidence? Oh, it's a trick. It's a mind Jedi trick. You can convince yourself that you are confident. Nerves, right? Let's say you're about to go on stage. Let's say you're about to do like a speech. Let's say you're about to do a presentation to your company. Frightening. The things that you feel, your heart pounding, your arms sweating, your like everything that your body does when you're nervous and feeling underconfident. Your body has the capacity to give you the most profound, most powerful performance enhancing drug known to man and it's coursing around your body. And as soon as you understand that that's what nerves are, it's just your body preparing you to be the best that you can possibly be. That was like a life hack that kind of switched things up for me. Whenever I got nervous, I would kind of remind myself that like it, if I was feeling all of those things, that meant I was doing exactly the right thing. It was exactly where I was meant to be. And then also I found that if you write down your achievements, that can really help with your confidence building, the little mini wins. And you do that every day and you catalog them. You can reverse the narrative in your head that says that you're not confident, that you're not good enough, that you're not all of those things that make us feel underconfident. I've always felt very unworthy and like low confidence, not meant to be here, imposter syndrome. And the way that I've counteracted that throughout my career is simply by giving less of a, about how other people see me. Because as soon as you remove that power from someone else and you give it to yourself, then you have the ability to stand up for what you believe in and you have the ability to understand what you yourself are worth. Criticism is a difficult one. It's, because it can feel like a failure. But I'm in an artistic environment. My entire industry is based on criticism and praise. That's it, that's the whole thing. Our shows, our films, our TV shows, our books, our scripts, our whatever, live and die by how it's received. So you gotta get okay with being criticized real early and try and determine whether that criticism is valid for you, whether it's useful, whether it's unuseful, and where to put it. We're in a creative industry. The only reason why we should be doing what we're doing is because we love it and it's because it sets our world alight and it's because we're trying to express ourselves in whatever creative way that we want. And so if you're determining the, the worth of that on a criticism from someone else who doesn't get what you do or doesn't like what you do or whatever it is, or a praise from someone else, it's the same thing. If you believe the praise, you sort of got to believe the criticism, so you kind of don't really have a choice to believe anything other than how you feel about it. Which brings me back to like my definition of success, which is the making of it is where I find my success. What empowers me? Snoop Dogg Dog empowers me. Uh, Beyonce empowers me. My dog empowers me. My friends empower me. Being happy empowers me. Pfft. Music often is the thing that empowers me, like a hype. Like I've got my hype people, I've got my mates, and I, when I need them to be my hype people, that's what they are. And if they're not there, then Beyonce normally is. Like not in person, I don't know how I wish I did. But as in her music is there. Watching stuff that I love, watching a TV show or a film that I adore or a play, that completely empowers me, it sets me alight. It, like anything that reminds me of my own creativity and what I really enjoy and what I really like, then I get hype, I get empowered.